What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today we're going to be talking about door controllers, what you need to know. Uh, I'm going to cover three general topics here. We're going to cover how to use them, uh, how to hide them. That's an important, an important thing to understand. Uh, and then we're going to talk briefly about the anti-grief and how it relates to door controllers, some stuff that you should know. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with how to use them. Um, and, we'll, and we'll begin in that topic with how to pair them. This is very, very simple. Um, obviously, you have to have a door uh, and some kind of power source. So I've set up these just generic power sources just to, to hook these things up to. Uh, and, and what we're going to do is just start with each type of door just so that we have an understanding of, of how they work. So the uh, first one we'll do is just the standard door. And so the only real thing is that you, it needs to be unlocked or not have a lock on it. And the reason that we can do this is that if you have doors in proximity to each other, you don't want to pair to the wrong door. So you keep a door that's locked cannot be paired to. If you try and pair this, a light will come on. It's not going to work. Uh, and so uh, if I unlock this door and I put a door controller near it, now I'm able to pair it. There you go, I've paired it. Uh, and so some things to note about them, and I'll just kind of show you with the door, you know, it actually matters whether it's closed or open. I'm just gonna put some door controllers. Uh, one thing is that you can pair more than one. So that's something that should that ever arise and you wanna try something. But basically there is a proximity requirement uh, that in height requirement, you can't really go any lower than right, right around here. And so if I start pairing these, uh, you can see they'll pair up to a certain point. These two are not pairing. Uh, these ones look like they're pairing up to about there. Uh, and then these ones, same thing is gonna pair about to, about to there. And so another thing to note is that if, let me just delete these ones. If I were to open the door with it being unlocked, there we go. And I tried to pair a door controller with the door open. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to pair it. And it's just because of the proximity of the door. The door is literally swung away from the door controller. And so you are now unable to pair it. Um, so really, usually when it comes to um, pairing issues with the door controllers, it's gonna be a proximity requirement. Um, and you can test how far they go just by just you know creating a line away from it. So uh, in fact, if I were to unlock this and open it so I could pair to it and I were to come out here and put one out there, I'd be able to pair for it. So, you know, what side it's on doesn't matter. Um, it just has to be unlocked or not have a lock on it. The easiest way is just to put a lock on it uh, and then pair it. And so once it's paired, you can then power it obviously. So if I were to just toss one up here, like so, pair it to the door, there we go. And if I were to run a line over to this door controller uh, here, then it opens, right? So we've covered that in videos where I use them, use them so that's not as important, uh, but just understand that the door has to be unlocked and or not have a lock on it and you want any doors around it to be locked so you don't accidentally put, uh, do the pair to the wrong controller. So same thing, we have double doors here. This would, you know, uh, armor, metal, doesn't matter, wood. They're all the same as far as pairing goes. Um, you can't, um, cannot put a door controller on this panel part here. It has to either be on the frame. Uh, you can't put it on this part of the frame. It has to be off to the side. There we go. Now with the double doors, because they're so much bigger, I'll show you there's a longer run out um, of how far these things can go. Um, and so if you start, if I unlock this and I start trying to pair, Obviously, these ones here are going to pair. These are going to actually pair up to a certain point. Looks like around here-ish is where they stop. Same thing over here. You can just go out and see. So right around, probably around here is where you're, you're drawing the line. Um, same thing because the door is so big. If we if we run these up higher, not on top of each other, if we run these up higher, uh, you can see as I pair them. Let's see. I think they're, yeah, just about there. But you'll notice that it is above the line, and we'll talk about that later but that is above the build line, which is an important thing to uh, note. Uh, obviously these ones are gonna pair, they're really low. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all you gotta do. And then once, and then once you're done pairing it, of course, just lock it and you are good to go. So uh, again, now with these doors, I'll show you where is the single door when it was opened, um, it did not pair on one side because it was too far away. The double doors based on how they run are, uh, they'll pair just because the double door itself is just so much closer. So um, the doors will often will close once you've um, paired to them, um, but really you can just tell because this light has, has turned on. Now, something else quickly to note is that if I were to say pair this to this door, oh, let me unlock this. 
if I were to pair this to this door, there we go. And then so it's paired, it's green. Uh, once you run uh, power to it, let me just jump or a line over here real quick. Once you run power to this thing, uh, it's gonna open and then, right, so it's, you can tell that the both lights are on, but if I unhook power or turn off power or whatever, uh, both lights turn off, it is still paired. The initial light only happens when it first pairs, but then after that, it remains paired unless you take the door off or take it off. Uh, and then it just works like this. So just a heads up, if you see that light disappear, it doesn't mean that it stopped pairing. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is the garage door. Uh, same, similar run out. You can just run these out and see. It's a it's gonna be about here, it looks like, probably. Make sure it's already unlocked. Um, yeah, about there. So that's, that's not bad. Uh, and then same thing with the top. It will run up top. The garage door actually lets you go a little higher. This is very useful later. We'll talk about this uh, during uh, when we're looking at hiding them. Uh, but once you have the, the door all set up, um, one thing to note is that when, when the garage door is open, let's open this up and I'll get rid of these. Uh, when the garage door is open, here we go. Let me just unlock this again. Now, if we were to run these out, like this, you'll notice that you can't pair them because the garage door is too far away. So it really, if you're having trouble pairing, uh, just note the position of the door. The door does not have to be open, it just has to be unlocked. So as long as the door is unlocked, you can pair to it. So if you're trying to get something in a particular position and you're having a hard time, uh, just shut the door so that you can get the door controller closer to it. Um, so that is the three main doors. And then lastly, we're gonna quickly look at the concept of the, of the, uh, the, the ladder hatches. Um, and so if I were to, let's just get rid of these doors. If I were to unlock this door, so we're above it, note. So then this is below it, right? So we're gonna deal with when we're above it. Uh, if I start putting door controllers up the wall, let's just go up this wall here. Uh, again, there's the same situation as the proximity to the door. So this is unlocked. If I start to pair this, uh, we'll hit a point. Uh, looks like right about up there is where it's too far. That one made it. So there is, a, again, a proximity situation um, with the doors. And so once we have this set up, if I were to, just for fun, we'll just go ahead and fire one of these off. It will open the door and it will close the door just like any standard thing. So if that's useful to you. Uh, and so, but there's a big difference between when the door, when you're above the door and when you are below the door. So if I were to lock this and now I'm gonna unlock this one. If I try to uh, set one up on this, I'll put these down even just close to the top here like this. Uh, and this is unlocked, ready to go. I am unable to pair a single one of these from underneath. And that is simply because the door is closed. So if you are trying to do this below the door, open the door, whoops, I locked it. Uh, there we go. Open the door and now try and pair it. Now it paired. So proximity to the door means everything. So when you're trying to do this, uh, if you're having trouble in one way, open the door. If you're trying another way, close the door. Uh, however you want to do it. Uh, back here, it's the same exact thing. We've got uh, a triangle door back here. So if I unlock this bottom one and start putting these up the wall, it's really similar to the other door. Uh, and if I were to go and pair these, see, we're having no problem pairing these. These are pairing up even higher. So the, so the triangle one's a little easier to do. Uh, but uh, same situation, if you were to try and do this with the top one and I put these down already, I'm unable to pair because it's I'm below it for whatever reason. So if you open this, I keep doing that. If you open this and now start putting them on the wall around it, you know, wherever this is terrible placement, but we're at whatever there it goes. So you can pick any of these and pair them if the door is closer to them. So uh, with the with the hatches, they're a little different whether you're top or bottom, but it's pretty easy to figure out. Just kind of manipulate the door's position until it fits where you want. And just as a final note uh, on this topic, uh, you can daisy chain these together. I know I have famously been kind of anti daisy chaining, but uh, some great comments lately have sort of changed my opinion about that. But to daisy chain uh, door controllers, it's very, very simple. You just run the pass through of one to the power in of the next one. And you can do that down the line with as many as you want within the limits of rust, right? So uh, if I run all these, that's what, five of them, they each take one unit of power to run. So if I were to just set this to five and then run power to this, then each of these would all, of course you'd use a switch or something, but it would take five units of power to power these five. Uh, if I were to add a sixth on the end of this and daisy chain this, 
uh, then it wouldn't light up because I don't have enough power, so I can make this six. Um, something to note if it matters, you know, it's come, obviously we've determined that with base lockdown circuits like I've built, this doesn't matter, it's actually beneficial. But if you daisy chain, and if the scenario is such that you don't want this, if you were to destroy one, you lose power to the rest. So as long as that's okay, uh, or it doesn't, you know, doesn't affect whatever you're doing, uh, then daisy chaining is perfectly acceptable. So that is all I've got for how to use. Pretty simple. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is talk about how to hide them. Uh, how to hiding them is gonna be honestly kind of an important thing to think about, um, and we're gonna cover more about this in the anti-grief portion. But hiding them matters. Uh, depending on what type of player you are or what kind of server you're playing on. But in general, uh, you gotta be careful because let's say, for example, let's just say I place a door controller here. I'm just using it and I've got this unlocked. There we go, we'll pair it and I'll lock this back up. And let's say that a raider gets in and they destroy my TC, put their own TC down. They have base off, they can grief me, whatever. Uh, if they were to then just take a small battery uh, here, and just place this down. They don't have to have the door code. They can just take a small battery, jump or align up to your door controller and open it without the code. All they need is TC auth. And so this is one of the arguments that a lot of people have against using door controllers. Um, so one thing you can do, so for instance, let's say I want to pair a door controller up here. I could do something like this where I pair it back here like that. And if I were to unlock this and pair this to that door, there we go. Uh, I can then, this is paired to the door, ready to go. I can then build a wall, like so, whatever in your base, and you can hide that back there. So yes, it's still paired to the door. Yes, the, the raider could, in theory, come in and find this and put a battery, but if you're careful about how you do this, uh, you, can, you can hide these pretty well. And so if I were to, say, put another one, and I could lock this back up, and then I could even build a triangle roof above this. And so this one, not quite high enough, you can still see it. Let's see if I can get that a little higher. Get this a little bit, there's the line now I can see it. So if I get this a little higher, unlock this door, there we go, that's better. So for the single door, it really comes down to, this is pretty much your only option. You're gonna have to hide it um, in some in some way. Something to note is that once this wall is up, if I were to try and really just cram one in there with no admin clipping, just put one in there, and then I were to unlock this door, it's very hard, if not impossible, um, to, you can't go, now you can't pair it because there's a wall in the way. So once you do this, uh, you are locked in. So that's something to think about. You have to plan very carefully, uh, depending on what you're gonna do. This is the really no different, but you know, if you you run these out to some point, wherever, I mean, you don't have, we, we know how far it goes out now, but let's say I put one way out there and I were to do this, I can pair that to this door, lock this up, same exact thing. And then I could build a wall right here um, to, to, uh, to hide it. And so now that is paired to the door, it does work just like the other one. If I were to put power to it, it's gonna open the door. And so again, this is really no different. You just have, it's a little easier with the double doors because of how much space you have. Um, these pair much easier to, to distances away from the door just because of the size of the door. Uh, and you know, you can build around them appropriately. So here we go, there we go, same thing. But again, once the wall is up, the wall is up and you're unable to uh, do this again. So there we go. So this is gonna be useful for trap bases, especially if you're trying to hide stuff so that the raider or the, you know, the victim of your trap base doesn't see the door controllers. Um, with the garage doors, um, it, there's actually two ways to do this. I'll show you my absolute, well, let's see. Well, I'll show you my favorite way to do it first. Uh, my absolute favorite way to do this is to notice though how this, how this lock is positioned here. So if I shut this door and you look at where that lock, and this is like using the, you know, the, the default skin, that lock sits along, you can see this line right here. And that's an important thing. So you got this blue piece, you got the sort of tan piece here, that top line right there is your reference line. So if I were to remove this lock, you would just take it off. I would then take this uh, door controller, and if you see where I'm lined, there's that line. If, you, uh, if I line that up perfectly with the top of that door controller and then open this door, and then move it so that it's hanging off the edge, just like that. If I go to pair this, there we go. So I've paired to the door. Now I had to close the door in order to pair it from earlier. Recall it was too far away to do that. So make sure you, in this scenario, just make sure the door is closed when you go to pair this or it'll be too far away. Uh, and then once it's paired, uh, you would then connect it to whatever. So I'll just, you know, like, usually what I would do is when I'm building the, the base, I'll, I'll do things where I'll 
I'll clip it, I'll, I'll take it from here directly into that, and then I'll go down to the bottom on the other side and kind of clip it in like this and whatever. There's a lot of things you can do with wiring. Maybe I'll make a video about how to clip wiring in a way that hides it really well. But the point is, uh, once you have it all set up, there it is, and you can add your lock back. There you go. And if you've done it right, if you've been careful and you hide it right, uh, that fully encompasses that door controller. And so if I fully encompass that door controller, even with the wiring tool, I cannot access those those lines. So with you with base off, with base off, basically the person who put the lock on with the code on is the only one that can take this lock off. So this is an incredibly, I do this every time. Uh, I made a video recently where I said, you know, you guys wonder how I, how I hid this. This is exactly what I did. So again, it's very, very simple. Uh, you just want to take the door controller, sit to the right of the door, look for the line of that of that that tan one, and line up the top of the door controller perfectly with that line. Open the door without moving it, and then slide out as far as you can, like about like that, because it drops down when you place it. Shut the door, pair the door, make sure it's paired. Open it back up. Is it paired? Yes. Put your lock on. There we go. Lock your lock and you're good to go. And so now that door controller is 100% hidden. And if you do that line trick, you no one will be able to access it. So this is, for garage doors, this is the greatest way to do it. Um, there is another way where if you're in you know, the base, you can do this thing where you can very carefully get them up into here. Um, that's another way you can see from the bottom, you can access that, that line port. And that does hide them actually pretty well, but a raider could find that and access it if they're savvy to that, that thing. So as far as garage doors, I highly recommend this method, just practice it a few times. But again, if you just use those lines and line them up and then set that door controller so that it's halfway out, because so, the, the lock sits on that, so that sort of back line there. If it's halfway out from the side of the garage door, it sticks out just like that, it'll, it'll hide it absolutely perfectly. So that is pretty much all I've got for hiding them. Um, I highly recommend that you practice these things uh, before you try to you know, employ them on a server. Uh, so uh, number three, the very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about um, anti-grief. And so uh, for anti-grief, you know, this is something that, um, it's something that you really, really, really gotta think of. And so what we're gonna do is rather, it's kind of hard for me to do this up here, floating on my, my floating stage up here. Um, so I'm just gonna, we're gonna portal over to something I built on land. And so here we are at this at this uh, spot. This is like this base, you know, you guys have probably seen this before. I make this a lot. This is uh, the Serenity, well, my version of the Serenity 2 by Evil Worst. You can Google that. It's a really great sort of tanky base that I use. Um, so we're gonna use this as an example and I'm gonna explain why this chonky, chonky anti-grief is here. Uh, versus what you know the more popular quick disconnect uh, anti-grief TCs. Um, before we do that, we're going to quickly shoot over to here, and we're going to talk about something real quick that's really important to understand about anti-grief and how it relates to door controller. So right here, we've got uh, you know door controller set up on this. Um, I am not authorized on any of these TCs all the way around. There's three of them, and I've built them in a particular order. So I this this would represent the base. I put this down. Um, I built this first. So I place this anti-grief first, and that's very important. The stone one I place first, the metal one I place second, and the armored one I place third. And I don't have, to, you know, these would represent anti-grief TCs. And so the thing about rust is, you know, we have all these, these bases that have five, six anti-grief. Only one of them is actually anti-grief. These do serve a purpose. They're going to stop someone from building close to your base, they do not provide you any protection uh, uh, regarding anti-grief. Only the first TC does. So it doesn't mean that you shouldn't build multiple TCs. It just means that, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you create like a statistical uh, like um, likelihood of them picking the right one unless someone like me, when I play on servers and I see a big build going on, I watch them to see which is the first one. So I know which one is the actual anti-grief TC. Most people aren't you know, necessarily gonna do that or they don't get lucky enough to see it start, whatever. Uh, but only the first one works. And here's, and I'll demonstrate that. Let's say I'm a raider and let's say I, I break in and I destroy the TC, right? So obviously right now um, I am unable to build anything. Um, I can't do anything. I can't put anything down. Uh, because of this anti-grief TC setup. Now, if I were to then know that this was the first one and I destroyed this and set my own down or just got access to it, whatever, uh, now I've got access to that one, despite these other two being here and I'm not having access to them, I am now able to build. I can build. I can play stuff down. And so here's this door that has a door controller on it. So me, as I, you know, 
uh, knew which one it was, if I were to then take a battery, say, I can place a battery, even though, you know, this is why this is so important to understand. I can place this battery and I could just, without any access to these doors, I could connect to a, to a, to a door controller and I could just open this door. So it's very important when you're using uh, when you're using door controllers that you understand this this process. So now let's take a look at this idea. So what I've done here, and this is why I do this, is that this base could have, you know, this is it's empty. I just just for the purpose of this tutorial. But if someone were to come in, and let's say I had a door controller on, let's just put one on one of these doors here. Oh, I've got one already. If I have this, I can I can connect to these right now. There we go. Perfect. So uh, if I were to, you know, be, let's say I was a raider and, and I broke into this base and I destroyed this TC, uh, right? So now I destroyed this TC. Let me just de-auth on this one so that this makes sense. Um, and I'll explain this in a minute. And so let's say I was a raider and I, you know, broke, I broke in, you know, I raided in whatever through the bottom and I found this door closed. Uh, like I was explaining over there, because that uh, that anti-grief over there, that one that I made is the first one, that's the only one that actually matters as far as, so I can't place this battery, I can't, I can't do anything over here because that anti-grief is stopping me. This is the reason why I build this, and I, <laughs> let's be real, let's be real folks, I get a lot of flack about this, I get a lot of people like to make fun of me for this, um, but I build this tanky uh, to, sometimes I'll even armor core the inside, um, this tanky anti-grief that just makes it, uh, you know, nobody in the, in the time I've been building whatever base that's on the end of this, nobody has ever taken the time and wasted the materials to come in and destroy this thing to grief my base. They don't care that much. So if that's something you want me to make a video about, if, if you're like me and you like, you know, serious redundancy and you don't want to lose your base, obviously there are disconnectable TCs that are much easier, but they're also much easier to raid. And so whenever I see a big group build something with five, six, you know, whatever, three, four, five, six anti-griefs, I try to watch to see which one goes down first. If I can get their TC, all I gotta do is get that first one, and then I have build authority in that base to go in and open doors with a battery. So this is how I get around that uh, that that problem of, of having door controllers, assuming that they're not hidden, like I've showed you, um, but if they're able to find it and they're able to get to that primary, then they're able to get into it. So. So that folks is pretty much all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise you can get me on my discord. See you later.